Ladies and gentlemen, boys, and hang on, I'm just getting some water. Ah, oh, my cup's empty. Girls, give me a second. I'm gonna pause this thing. I'm gonna fill up some water. I I shouldn't. That shouldn't be how this podcast starts, but it is. So fuck you. <laughs> I got some water. All right, I'm back. Hey, I should restart the whole episode, but I won't. Hello, welcome to episode 106 of, I don't know, 100 and something of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Uh, I'm using the new microphone. Uh, I I changed the microphone. I'm I'm not holding it anymore. I'm using the microphone on top of the fucking camera that I used to film this shit. Just because I bought this thing and I was like, cool, now I can film my podcasts and I'll be able to hold a microphone and it'll sound way better. Never tried the professional microphone that's on top of the camera. I tried it for the first time and everyone was like, oh yeah, this is way better. Fuck, man, I've been hauling around a microphone and a microphone fucking cable everywhere with me every single time I need to record a podcast when I'm not at home. And all I had to do was carry around my fucking podcast camera and use the mic on top of that, and that sounds better. Been wasting my time. It's like, dude, the thing's like as big as my phone. It fits in my pocket, and I've been carrying around all this extra gear that I didn't need to. So thank you for everyone who told me that it was better. I'm going to continue to use this one um, because of your feedback. So now you should be able to hear all of the background noise, like me... I don't know, starting the podcast, walking away from the camera and needing to get some water. So thanks to you, that kind of quality content has made it into the podcast. Now, some more quality content, listening to me sip. You're welcome. (laughs) Oh, and uh, shout out to the one guy that said, uh, yeah, it sounds much better and it looks better. Uh, Didn't change the camera, fuckhead. That's, see, that's what makes me go, maybe it doesn't actually sound better. Maybe you guys are just like, oh, it's different. He told me it should sound better, therefore it does. Maybe that's this placebo shit. So, I don't know. The point is, guys, I'm in a good mood. I don't know if you can tell. Sorry, this one was late. Uh, situation's out of my control. I have uh, I had a guest lined up for this Sunday's podcast, but it fell through. Um, but that... Yeah, so I didn't get to record it, so I'm doing it by myself. But I can confirm I've got a. We're getting them back in, and it's, I don't know it's a massive fuck around. Point that I'm trying to say is I got a really cool guest, probably probably the coolest guest um, that I've ever done coming up on the podcast. In oh, fuck, when do they say? Maybe next? Was it next week? Did they text me? I don't know why I'm looking this up. Um, what did they say? Where are we? Do, 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 do. Righto. How's Wednesday, 4th of April? When's that? Oh, that's ages away. Guys, I've just teased an interview that isn't going to be happening for about three weeks, so... <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Let's get into the solo podcast. Uh-uh. Man, I've been listening to, to some Migos recently. You know that rap group? The group, every time I listen to them, they say like three things that I know I would really like if I wasn't a white Australian guy. Do you know what I mean? Like I hear the beats and I'm like, yeah, this Migo shit is cool. And then they'll say some kind of fucking lingo that I don't understand. Like the one that got me recently, and I can't stop thinking about this. I think about it all the time. It's It goes on in a loop where I'll just say the three words. And I don't know which Migo said it. It could have been Quavo, could have been uh, Takeoff, or could have been the other one. Leftovers, whatever his name is. <laughs> right? This is his fucking Migos song. And the line is Extra Pussy for My Savage. Extra Pussy for My Savage. Excuse extra pussy. First of all, confused on many levels. Being some white dude from Australia. All right, what's a savage? Okay, that's my first thing. Cause my savage. Like, do you employ this man? Second thing. 
extra pussy? Is this savage being paid with pussy? And did he do an exemplary job so he gets more pussy? Or do savages employed underneath leftovers or whatever other Migo said that line, do they, do all employees get paid in pussy, but savages get extra pussy? Extra pussy for my savage? Like, that's that's some perks, man. That would be one of the only employers that exclusively pays in pussy is being one of the Migos sav- savages. I, I can't stop thinking about that. Extra pussy. Extra pussy. It's not like your regular amount of pussy. It's a little bit extra. Chuck a little bit in there for a bit doing a really good job at being a savage. That's like sales commissions, man. I remember when I used to work in sales, I got paid in money, not pussy. But sometimes, uh, if I did a good job, I get some extra money. You know? Extra money for my salesman. <laughs> Instead of extra pussy for my savage. And it's like, bro, I want to know. That's just... I can't I can't imagine, like, fucking Quavo walking up to his savage and being like, Hey, man, looking at our quarterly reports, you've been such a good savage. All right? So many... So much savage behavior has been happening. Savage, savage productivity is up by 30%. Thanks to your behavior in this office. And then the savage guy is like, yeah, no worries, boss. No worries. The reason why I've been working so hard at being extra savage is because of your generous extra pussy for my savage package. That's why I moved down to California to get this job. Because not only did I get great health insurance, I also get extra pussy if I'm a savage. (laughs) <laughs> extra pussy for my savage I love it that's the kind of shit that I will never understand and even if someone explain if I look it up on Urban Dictionary or whatever I'm still not gonna fucking get it so I'm just taking my jacket off it's too fucking hot oh man extra pussy for my jacket <laughs> <laughs> Um, man, I'm, I'm in a good mood because I'm doing the com- the Comics Lounge tonight. Uh, very excited for it. I've been trying out all this new shit, man. Trying to get my new hour together. I think I, got, I, think I have about 15 minutes. Well, what is going to be about 15 minutes of new shit? And uh, very excited about it. So far, all of it is working. There's just so much to expand upon and I'm trying to pick which lane I'm going in. I'm, I, think, I think this year's show is going to be quite... Uh, different. Well, it'll be still be the same stand-up, but the topics I cover will be quite different. Um, and I'm very excited about it. Dude, there's a guy across the street in Lycra in a building, and he's fucking getting naked, man. Oh, that's... Oh, no, he just closed all the blinds. Fuck. That would have been a great podcast. No, he left one open. God, boys, we're on. All right, so I can see him. He's in a helmet. He's got Lycra on. He's just taken off the helmet. He's undoing the zip of his Velcro. And he's closing the final blind. I'm so- <laughs> sorry about that, guys. You're not going to get any any des- descriptions of a, of a fucking bike ride. I'd be like, dude, look at his fucking massive naked calves. Um, yes, I'm doing the lounge tonight. Very excited. No better place to perform comedy in uh, in the country. I uh, love that love that joint, and I'm um, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to all the new shit I've been trying out. I'm, I feel really good about it, and um, man, I feel great about videos. I feel good about radio. Everything in career wise and creatively is just going very well for me. I'm very happy with it. I feel like I'm in such a routine, and the ball is rolling. I've got an editor helping me, and and he's helping me film stuff here and there as well, and. It's all, it's all rolling, so uh, I feel good about it. I mean, the, the, the money situation is still... I'm, I'm still on Gene's money, guys. I'm still on 400 bucks a week. It's not very much money, but I feel like it's coming, man. I can feel it. I can taste it. Patreon support's going up as well. Thank you very much to everyone on there. It's all happening. I'm very, feeling very positive at the moment. 
Another reason why I'm so happy is uh, I read a story about Steph Curry playing golf in a hotel room. <laughs> and that is just great. See, that's why I want to move beyond jeans money. I want to be on playing golf in a hotel money. So what this guy was doing... Where are we? All right. So what this cunt was doing... And I want to start off the story by saying yes reprehensible behavior, but also very fucking funny. Imagine this shit. Ah, oh, fucking ads, man. Every time I see an ad, I have to will myself to not turn fucking ad blocker on. Anyway. Right. Just imagine this, bro. You're in a, you're in a hotel with your boys and one of you brings a fucking golf club into the hotel room, sets up balls, and starts teeing off in the hotel room, just straight into a wall. Could you fucking imagine the noise? How funny that shit would be to smack a golf ball, and then it goes straight into the wall half a second later. And it goes through the wall, man. That'd be so fucking funny. Steph Curry has never been shy about professing his love for golf. Uh, on Thursday... Dude, he posted this on his own Instagram. Jesus Christ. That's that's fucking boss money. That's like, hey, sue me, I don't care. So he, <laughs> this guy's teed off in his own hotel room and smashed the golf club into a glass table and smashed the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Amazing! That is the funniest shit ever. Like, that's what happens, man, when when you've been on tour that long. Going on tour is fucking lonely. Because I've done it. it. You get so bored and lonely in between shows or in between games that you just do anything. Like, I remember when I first started touring, before I started stand-up comedy, you, you know when you read articles about celebrities like accidentally killing themselves by choke wanking like they'll hang themselves and have a wank and they're hanging themselves in a closet and they get off to like getting choked but they accidentally pass out and then they end up killing themselves i would read stories like that and i'd be like that's fucked up man who would ever do that but then i would be in canberra on the 15th show of a tour two months in and i'd be like man i wish there was a closet high enough for me to choke wank with <laughs> i like i get it i'm so fucking bored there's only so many times i can play nintendo ds before that choke wank starts looking like a good idea i'm like oh man extra choke wank for my lonely comic <laughs> Oh, man. You know what else I've seen recently? You know that... I don't know, you wouldn't have seen it if you're not in Australia. I don't know if it's in any other state, city, but there's been... This is how fucking stupid cunts are, man. This is how dumb people are. In Melbourne, there are billboards, posters, signs, adver it's like a giant advertising campaign. So I'm just adjusting the camera here. A giant advertising campaign for, like, the Ambulance and Emergency Services Australia. Mainly ambulances. And the only thing they're saying is triple zero, which is our emergency number. They're saying triple zero is strictly for emergencies only. Only call this number if it's a life-threatening thing. And I, I saw that for the first time, and I was like, yeah, I know that. Who doesn't know that? But then I saw this massive campaign fucking everywhere. I started talking to other people about it. Turns out, it's so common to call the emergency service number with just, oh, I've got a cold, what do I do? Or just shit that's not an emergency. And that fucking blows my mind that cunts are that dumb that they'll sneeze and call an ambulance. It's It blows my mind that you even have to say that shit. Like, hey, did you know paramedics are for people who are about to die? Please don't waste our time. 
That's the ad campaign. It's not even like, call us if you're about to die so people know about it. It's like, hey, too many people know about this and they think we're a service for anything. Can you please fuck off? <laughs> uh. Oh man, sorry. I had, I had such a funny thing happen. I don't have too many stories about what happened to me this week because I had such a funny fucking thing happen that I really want to talk about it. But I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna save it for the stage. Um. Where are we? Oh, I'm talking about this this fucking thing. That Facebook data leak by Cambridge Cambridge whatever the fuck some business that is about uh, getting analytics and shit for other companies and selling people's information on Facebook. It's fucked up what they did, man. But I don't know why people are surprised. So Facebook is in trouble because some fucking I'm gonna I gotta Google it. Some fucking company. What's it called? Cambridge something. Cambridge. Cambridge Analytica. Yeah, so this British uh, analytics investigation firm, which is basically like professional spyware, um, what they've done is they've gone on Facebook and they paid 270,000 people, one or two dollars, for access to their Facebook information. So not their accounts, but just, hey, can we see everything that your Facebook account knows? Just 270,000 people. And what they did from those people is they got every single one of those 270,000 people. They looked at all of their friends on there and gathered all the information they could from those Facebook profiles. And they had 50 million, the, the private information of 50 million people who did not agree to give it to Cambridge Analytica. They got, they got it through going through their Facebook friends. 50 million cunts and then they use that information to create psycho analytical personality whatever the fucks and sold it to different politicians and businesses and uh, <clears throat> they reckon that's information that Donald Trump used to win the election but I, I, I fucking guarantee you that every other political campaign was also using something fucking similar but everyone's losing their mind being like oh my god I can't believe this company is selling information to other people. It's like, yeah, dude, that's what Facebook is. And that's and people are complaining about it on Twitter, where they do the same fucking thing. Or they'll post about it on Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. Or they'll text someone on WhatsApp, also owned by Facebook. Like you can't get away with this shit away from this shit because no one was willing to pay for social media. It's our fucking fault. If no one's willing to pay to use Facebook, Facebook is not the product we are. And then Facebook sells our information to other businesses. I was watching something on TV that reckoned from all of the money that Facebook makes from selling ads to us and selling our information to other businesses, they're only really making about two... Two to seven dollars a year out of each user, meaning if every person on Facebook paid seven bucks to use Facebook for the year, there'd be no ads, no one would fucking sell, get their information sold, and uh, Facebook could keep expanding and getting bigger and remain as insanely profitable as it is while cutting out all of the shady information dealing. Not that they ever would. But I do think that that's fucking interesting that the reason these companies do this shit and sell our data is because we refuse to pay for shit. <clears throat> and like, I would pay... Dude, I, I would 100% fucking pay $7 to never see an ad on Facebook ever again and to be guaranteed that my information will never be sold. Fuck yeah. I mean, I hope they never do it because I use Facebook ads to get you cunts to come to my shows. <laughs> but but even when I use those Facebook ads, man, I'm surprised at the amount of shit that me, just some guy, is allowed to know about you. So I never get information about, this is fucking Tom and he lives in Melbourne and this is what he likes. But I do, what I can do is I can be like, hey, so... I'm doing a show in in fucking Brisbane and I want to I want this ad to be shown to everyone who likes my page who is age 16 to 34 or even 16 to 17 I can get that specific I want only women 
and I want them to be within 40 kilometers of the show, and I want uh, those people who like me, also if they like these other pages that are similar to me, and they spend money on Facebook like this, in this way, like they download apps, or they spend money on games, or any of that kind of shit, I can actually target my ads at people who use Facebook and spend money in a specific way. And that's just their, like, broadly public advertising tools to me, a guy who's only putting in, like, a couple thousand dollars a year into the thing whenever I want to sell a tour, like, once a year. Whereas there are these political campaigns that are putting in fucking millions of dollars every day into this shit. Um... Like, to, to think of the tools that those cunts must get access to is is fucking mind-boggling. And I think it's crazy that we've given... It's our fault that social media companies have this amount of power because no one wants to pay for shit. No one wants, no one wants to pay for a service that they use fucking every day and a lot of people use uh, to make money on. They're like, oh, but I won't pay for it. I'd rather just get some fucking company to, to company to sell my exact personality type to the Donald Trump campaign so he can trick me into voting for him. I don't know, man. It's crazy shit. Yeah, like, the, the, the only solution to it is to get everyone to pay for Facebook, and nobody would fucking do that. Um, but yeah, the funniest thing is, is Twitter making it trend on their platform. Like, look at what Facebook's doing. Don't they suck? <laughs> And it's like, dude, you're doing the same fucking thing. It's in your terms of service. I signed it. I mean, I didn't read it, but I signed it. I know it's there. I haven't even read the shit, and I know it's there. Fucking extra data for my social media networks. <laughs> extra pussy for my savage. Man. Um, I suppose I'll give you cunts an update on the comedy special. Oh, nothing interesting's happening. It's all very boring. Um, still just editing. Still talking to the director. Him going, hey, when you tell this joke, do you want it to be shown from this angle or that angle? And then I go, that angle. And he goes, cool, how does this look? And I'm like, yeah, it looks pretty good. It's so fucking boring. But uh, once this tedious process is finished, then, I don't know, the fucking lead up to release can happen. And that's very exciting. Oh, dude, actually, looking at my... um. I had a look at my Indiegogo campaign, and it's really shitting me at the moment. Because you people can still pledge money to pre-order essentially the um, comedy special, and right now it is twenty-seven dollars away from fifty thousand dollars, which I think would make it officially uh, the biggest comedy special crowdfund in the world. Um, let me look at the guy who's coming second. Where are we? How much did he raise? This guy. Um, oh, dude, I'm like $200 away from the biggest crowdfund of all time for, for a comedy special, which is fucking cool. So hopefully before the thing releases, if, if, I don't know, if, collect, if I don't know, if you want, basically what I'm saying is if you want to fucking pre-order, I get so many people asking me every day, where can I get the, um, Death Threats Don't Scare Me t-shirts? It's on the crowdfund page. If you check it out there, you can actually pre-order it and it'll get shipped out when the comedy special drops like everyone else so the crowdfund has ended but because the thing is not out yet and none of the rewards are properly released uh you can still pledge to essentially pre-order it so check it out just search like lewis spears comedy special and it'll come up on google or lewis spears crowdfund you better find it um yeah so it's there Little bit pluggy podcast today, guys. Sorry, I've been I've been fucking busy today. Just getting I'm writing bi monthly bull. <clears throat> um, I think this episode's going to be good. I'm not sure if it's going to be out this week, but I do have a backup video to put up. I'm going to try and get it up on Thursday, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get it done because it's like 60% written, which means I'll probably finish writing it tomorrow and then I'll film it on Thursday. Yeah, it's it's not going to be up this week, so I got to get a backup video sorted, which I do have. So I'm still fucked in weekly, but. Bi-monthly ball will come out next week, probably on Tuesday, I reckon. Um, so that the news I'm covering can be even fucking later. <laughs> um, but I've worked out a... I don't know. I've worked out a faster process to writing bi-monthly ball. Because what I'll do is I'll write down the stories that I want to cover. Because obviously I'm late 
to every story so I just bank up all the stories that I want to cover and then I try and smash them all out in one sitting but because I want it to be so punchy it's such a bitch to write so what I'm what I'm going to do instead is as soon as I see a story I'm going to cover I'm going to write just that story in one day and then that'll sit there forever and I can update it rather than fucking sitting down and having eight stories that I have to write in one day which is just too much fucking work I can do it collectively and then basically stop writing when I've I don't know, on, on whichever day I've picked a story and then I've written one, it looks like, oh, fuck, I've got fucking five to seven stories. I can just film this now instead of sitting down with seven headlines and trying to write fucking 12 minutes of good satire. I do it gradually over the two weeks because I want to get it back to coming out every two weeks because that's what I think it should be. Um, either way, fucking weekly videos. It'll be another Cooking Without Instructions that'll be the backup one. And I, and I think the next one's probably one of the best Cooking Without Instructions I've done. I'm very excited for it. <clears throat> um, all right. What else did I want to talk about today? Uh, yeah, man, I'm so fucking bummed. I was going to go to the... I, had, I, I was going to have so much shit to talk about. The fucking Cursor shows were supposed to be this weekend, but... The poor cunt's got a paralyzed vocal cord. I've talked to him, I've been talking to him for a couple days about it. It sounds fucked up, it sounds so scary. Having paralyzed vocal cords. Like, he's seen specialists and he's had to cancel shows, which he's never done. And, you know, it's like when, because Cursor, he's a rapper, right? If you don't know him. It, you never think when it's your voice. Like, it freaked me out, man. Like, my voice is my career. Uh, and so is his, and you never think, like, obviously, I think he's going to get better, and that's what it looks like, but you never think, what freaked me out is you never think that you can injure your voice, or you could lose, like, you lose your voice from yelling too much, and then you're fine in a couple of days, but you never think that you're going to just fucking lose it, and and injure it, and, and you can't do it again, you know, that's the kind of shit that happens to athletes, to their bodies where they get too old or they go through too many injuries and then all of a sudden they're not good anymore. If, if you're someone who uses their voice or their brain, like a scientist or whatever, you never think that uh, something could take out your career, you know? Or cause you to, to not be able to work. Or, I don't know, it just kind of freaked me out. I'm like, fuck, that could happen to me, man. I could be doing a tour and then one day I get paralyzed vocal cords and i got to cancel shows. You just never think that shit happens to you. So, um, shout out to Cursor, man. I hope, I, I, hope him, I hope I wish him a very speedy recovery. I know he'll bounce back. He's such a fucking hard worker, that cunt. Um, and he'll be fine. Um, I hope him wish him a speedy recovery and that it never happens to him or me or anyone else because that sucks, man. Paralyzed vocal cords. That's some fucked up shit. <clears throat> um, all right, guys. On that incredibly fucking depressing note, shall we get into miscellaneous bit at the end? I do know that I have some fucking good questions this week, at least. <laughs> um, all right. Where are we? All right. So the first question is from... Just let me get it up here. Uh, Alright, so miscellaneous bit of the end is the part of the podcast where I answer questions or life advice or you tell me funny stories that I think I, that you think I would like <coughs> um, about re revenge or vandalism or anything. If you need any life advice, anything like that. If you think uh, I can help you out or if you think I can make it funny, send an email to podcast at com, and I will do my best to get back to you in the podcast form. Um, alright, so, we got this first one. My girlfriend is acting different, and I don't know what to do. Um, g'day cunt, my name is Mel. So, we got a, a girl having girl problems. Ha, <laughs> fucking karma, bitch. <laughs> uh, we got a girl having girl problems here. Alright, my name's Mel. Basically, I'm having feelings for my ex, and I think they still like me, too. Uh, oh, hang on. Is this, this isn't the right fucking email. It's not. Idiot. Alright. Let's start again. Sorry, guys. My girlfriend's acting different. I don't know what to do. Hey, cunt. I know this is probably going to be rambling, but that's because I don't know what's going on or what to do. My name is Carly, and I have a girlfriend called April. To get this stat, to get this straight, 
Well, it's not very straight to start off with, is it? I mean, this is very fucking gay. To get this gay, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not wanting to break up with her. I'm just asking for help from someone else to help me possibly better understand and help the situation. April and I have been going out for over a year, and everything is almost perfect. We're both in year 12, and a lot is going on. Basically, I know I'm very emotional, uh, and added added to the pre- adding the pressure of VCE, I'm not exactly a blast to hang out with at the moment. But April loves me despite all of this. Before this year started, we planned out we would try to see each other regularly as not to let our relationship die, but to also understand that VCE comes first. That's good. I think that's healthy, putting fucking important career shit before... Um, well, important personal life stuff before your relationship, I think, is always a good thing. Because otherwise, both of you spend so much time on each other that you let go of what's important in each other's individual lives. And then you're like, oh, you're the reason why I didn't become an Olympic pole vaulter. I hate you. I will never eat your pussy. <coughs> um, I'm going to have to give that, that that pussy to my savage. That's, that's where all my pussy goes. Um... Uh, blah, blah, blah. We also tried to understand that VCE comes first for both of us. <coughs> and, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> oh, fuck. And over the summer, we had the most amazing time and became even closer, though I didn't even think that was possible. This was going perfectly until a couple of weeks ago. I felt like because she was stressed with sex, she was becoming distant, which obviously I didn't mind and didn't try to make her focus on me. But after her sex, which are like, important test if you're not from Australia. After her sax is finished, she stayed distance. It's a mixture of so many things bothering me. When I message her when we will meet up next, she leaves me on red. Not good. When I ask her about work, on two separate occasions, she refused to talk to me about it, and I almost feel like she doesn't want to talk to me at all. When we're at school, we don't want teachers and random people knowing we're together because, hey, we don't want to get bashed. Oh, okay, so you guys are you guys go to the same school, but you're in the closet. Okay, this this makes things hard. Um, we don't want to get bashed. It's happened at my school before. So at school, she's incredibly distant. Won't do anything as small as put her hand on my shoulder when I cried in class because she was afraid people would see. Man, that sucks. That sucks that you two have to deal with that uh, in uh, the current year of 2018. Uh, that's, that's a fucking shame, man. I understand that there's a huge possibility that I'm being dramatic and emotional about nothing, but I'm genuinely worried about her and us. Honestly, she was having a hard time before all of this, so I would ask if she's okay, but because I knew she wasn't, I got that hint that it was bothering and annoying her. However, now, if I even ask her how she is, she'll completely ignore the question, which makes me think, again, something is up that she won't say. I'm sure none of this makes sense, and you're probably wondering why I'm messaging you in the first place, as it's just some little kid's drama to you, but hey, I tried. Maybe this will make some kid kill himself. (laughs) Maybe this will make some kid kill himself. Thanks, if you can help. If not, just have a shit one. Um, Yeah, Carly, sounds like a combination of things. Sounds like VC is stressing both of you out. But sounds like what's even more stressful is the fact that both of you girls love pussy, and you can't tell anybody about it. I imagine that would put some fucking heavy strain on your relationship, and uh, I don't know, man. It, it do, I don't think it's it doesn't to me it doesn't sound like petty fucking high school relationship drama. It sounds like some regular petty relationship drama. There's just the added the added variable of trying to hide the fact that you love puss. Um, I don't know, man. I think you just need to you just need to talk to her. Like it sounds it sounds like you're you you don't need my help. Like it looks like you know what you're doing. Uh seems like your girlfriend is having a fucking hard time, but she's not telling you about it. Um I mean the only way you can force you can't force someone to open up to you, but you can let them know that you know they're not, you know? You can come to them and say, "Hey, I've noticed that you're not okay and you're also not telling me anything. I think it would be better for you and our relationship if you told me so I can help or whatever if there's a problem with us we can work it out because you just staying silent um, <clears throat> is just it just sucks um, but but you know she could just be really fucking busy with VCE I did this to my girl I, d- I did the same shit to my girlfriend 
when my comedy special was coming up, I was freaking out. I was always working, trying to refine material, and because this thing was so important to me, I'm like, oh, it needs to fucking be great, and just being really stressy, and I was worried about whether or not I could raise the money, and then when we did raise the money, the next thing was organizing everything, and all these people talking to me, and, and you know, I, I don't think VCE is as stressful as that, but that made me fucking distant with my girlfriend and she had to tell me I didn't even know she was like hey you're freaking out about this stuff and it's affecting us um because you're not talking to me or telling me about your problems because you're so worried about them that you're trying to fix them and uh that made me go oh yeah I am being a bit of a stressy shit cunt maybe I should talk to this chick who I, who I know will support me so I don't know I, I think the only thing you can really do Carly is fucking talk to her and, and tell her you know that she's freaking out. Um, Alright, another question. Send me an update. I'd love to know how that goes. Another another email from a girl! This time we got a vandalism story. See, I, ha- this is, I think this is our first vandalism story from a girl! So I'm very excited. Um, this one, I've got her real name, but it's vandalism. So I'm going to call her something else. Uh, G'day, cunt. I'd prefer it if you kept me anonymous, so just call me Sarah or something generic like that. Well, that's what I call every girl, so you're going to be Sarah. All right. This story starts back in January of this year. I was going into... Oh, the subject line is, I vandalized the high school toilets so bad they had to be shut down. Now, there's only one thing funnier than vandalism, and that is vandalism in high school. Because it's always not well thought out, and it's always catastrophic damage for no... For a fucking dumb reason. This story starts back in January of this year. I was going into grade 10 and my school announced that there were new toilets that everyone in grade 10, 11 and 12 had to use while everyone in the lower grades got told to use the old toilets. This would not have been an issue if not for the fact that the new bathrooms are halfway across the universe. I swear, on an average day, it took me 10 minutes just to walk there. Yeah, that's annoying. The way my school is set up is that there's the main classroom block in the middle of the campus with other buildings like sports centers or blah, blah, blah. The old bathrooms are right beside the main classroom block, which is convenient for everyone. But the new bathrooms are right in the very corner of the campus behind the sports center, barely even on school grounds. It fucking sucks. Everyone in grade 10, 11, and 12 was annoyed about the new bathroom arrangements, but the teachers didn't care. Standard. Uh, they just said we should be thankful that they spent all this money on us and threatened to give us rubbish duty at lunch if we didn't abide by their stupid rules. Alright, you should be grateful that we put uh, an essential thing in an inconvenient location and banned you from using one that is easier to use for no reason. Say thank you, cunts. That sounds like fucking high school. Um... But the problem with that reasoning is that this is a private school, which means the money they used to pay for the new toilets was from our parents, (laughs) who sent us to the school to learn. Very good point. My parents don't pay thousands of dollars for me to get an education just so the school can waste the money on a new fucking bathroom that nobody wants. (laughs) So you were like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to waste my parents' money even more by fucking damaging the cunt. Um... One day, a teacher that we'll call uh, Mr. Richard, because he's a dick, caught me walking out of the old toilets. He stopped me in the hall and said, you're in grade 10, aren't you? I said, yes. Then he put me on the fucking rubbish duty. That's when I snapped. The next day, halfway through first period, I asked my teacher if I could go to the toilet. She said yes, probably not suspecting anything, because I'm the quiet girl who sits in the back and has never done anything wrong in her life. But she didn't see that I'd stuck a permanent marker in my back pocket. Ah, I'm excited! I'm excited! After my 50-day hike to the toilets, I checked that no one was inside. Luckily for me, it was empty. I went in, and in the first toilet stall, I wrote the lyrics of All Star by Smash Mouth. In the next, I wrote the lyrics of Good Night by Chris <laughs> Maston. Oh, yes, amazing! In the third, I drew a penis. In the last, which had an out-of-order sign on it, I drew a swastika, another penis, and the words Great America Again. You are a genius. Because that's the kind of shit that everyone would expect a boy to do. I swear, man, every time there's, like, graffiti of, like, swastikas or Make America Again or racist shit, it's, I bet it's not done by actual racists. I bet it's done by fucking edgy 16-year-old people like Sarah here who have just done it not because they hate anyone or anything, just because they want to fuck up the toilets. I swear, that's what 90% of this racist... 
uh, graffiti is, is just fucking idiot teenagers who don't know the, the significance of the swastika because it's so long ago to them and they don't know anyone affected by the Holocaust that they're like, LOL, I'm not supposed to do this, so that's why I did it. I timed myself and this only took about seven minutes. When I got back to class, no one questioned when I had been because everyone everyone was used to going on the bathroom trips taking 10 years by then. That afternoon, the school's vice principal came in and basically interrogated the class to find out who had drawn all over the shiny new bathroom walls. Obviously, no one came forward and the teachers didn't suspect me because, as I said, I'm the nice shy girl who would never do such a thing. See, nice shy girls, psycho bitches underneath. I don't think anyone was actually punished for it now that I think about it. Uh, the next week, the bathrooms had been almost completely cleaned and you could barely tell that it had been vandalized. So I devised another plan. Here we go. At the start of the year, um, when the teachers had announced the new toilets, they also warned us not to use the toilet with the out of order sign because if you flush it, the bowl would fill up and overflow and flood the whole bathroom. Ah, oh, I like it. So they were giving you ammo. So last Friday, I stayed back at the library to catch, catch up on homework. I was actually just playing video games. When almost everyone else had gone home, I left the library and went back to the bathroom. As I suspected, there was nobody there, so I began my mission. First of all, I hid an old egg sandwich and a cracked can of tuna under the sink. Secondly, I took down the out-of-order sign from the broken toilet and put three other out-of-order signs on the good toilets. You're a fucking psychopath, man. This is so smart. Lastly, I got out my permanent marker and on the bathroom mirror <laughs> wrote the names, my, wrote the words, my name Jeff and drew another penis. <laughs> the next Monday, I wasn't at school because I'd gotten the flu. But on the following Tuesday, there was an announcement that someone had been stupid enough to use the out-of-order toilets, and the new bathrooms had to be closed for at least a week while they fixed the damage. It's a week later, and they're still closed. It's been great. Every now and then, a small part of me feels guilty about this since the school has to spend money fixing the damage that I caused. <laughs> but then the feeling usually passes and I just laugh. Thanks for reading my story, Lou. I hope you got a good chuckle for it, and hopefully nobody killed themselves during this. Have a shit one. Sarah. Um, yeah, got a great chuckle through it. And look, you're right. You should feel bad because you're a horrible person for doing that. But also, let's all have a laugh for Sarah's sake. That's fucking funny as. Vandalizing toilets so bad. And you know what? You're a girl. So they nev they will never, ever fucking catch you, ever. There is no way that they will catch a fucking girl unless... And here's what I would do if I was a teacher. I would have a teacher stationed outside, outside, not inside, outside the toilets, away with binoculars. And every time a student came out of the toilet, I would go in. Oh, but you can't go in. Fuck. Yeah, teachers can't go into the fucking kids' toilets, can they? Yeah, what I was going to say is I'll, if, if I, when I saw a kid go out, I would then go in and check if there's damage. If there's no damage, I'd come back out, wait for the next cunt to come in, because then you just walk in and there's damage. You go, oh, the last guy to use it was fucking Sarah. I'm going to catch it. But you can't go in. Fuck. See, there's no real way for people to catch you if you've been vandalizing toilets unless they have... Uh... I mean, I mean, even with security camera footage, they can only put it outside the toilet. So unless you walk out holding a marker like an idiot... You're going to be fine. So, I don't know, Sarah. I don't think you can get caught for this one, mainly because you're a girl and no one suspects the quiet girl, but uh, also because you've just done it You've just done it so well. You've, you've got no motive. They're like, hang on, is this person... We have three suspects. We've either got someone who hates the Jews and puts swastikas everywhere, someone who really likes Reese Maston, or some girl called Jeff. <laughs> So look, I don't think I don't think you're gonna get caught for this one, and uh, you know what? For that behaviour, I'm gonna say that you're a savage and you deserve extra pussy for my savage. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. That's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you want early access to everything that I do, consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, that's the only reason I've been weekly this year because I'm paying an editor, I'm paying for a storage unit and more equipment and. Uh, all this extra shit and the podcast and I'm just breaking even on it so it'd be cool to make some money out of my online content without just throwing cash into the hole. Um, 
So if you would like to help me improve operations and buy my fucking lunch, consider supporting me on Patreon or buy a t-shirt. I'm wearing a Try and Stop Me t-shirt right now. They're very comfy and I still have a few left. Um, I'd like to get rid of them before my next tour. So yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, LouSpears.com slash merch or Patreon.com slash LouSpears. Thanks for listening. I will see you next Sunday. I've got a very exciting guest coming up. Not next episode, but fucking ages away. I don't know why I teased it. This is your boy, Lewis Spears, signing out. Have a fucking shit one.